Whether the result of hoaxes in folklore, or something far more sinister, Black Eyed Kid sightings are one of the most puzzling and peculiar of all paranormal phenomena. To help me present these 10 bone-chilling and allegedly true encounters, I'm joined by Azazel Codex. I'll link his channel in the video description below. I'm Fearcrawler. Welcome to the video. So, black-eyed kids. The mere idea of them terrifies me. It didn't used to. In fact, I didn't understand what the big deal was. I don't know why. I mean, I read the online stories and articles about BEKs just like everyone else. But I just didn't have that visceral reaction so many other people did when reading about them. So I embarked on a quest. I'd show people just how unscary these things were, whatever they were. Who knew if Black Eyed Kids was even a real thing? I'm the kind of person who needs to see it for myself. I began doing a lot of research online. I looked at the paranormal sites, I watched scary videos on YouTube about Black Eyed Kids, and from everything I gathered, they found you. You didn't find them. So what was I to do? I came up with a plan. I began putting up an anonymous ad on Craigslist. It read, Black Eyed Kids, I am not afraid of you. I want to meet you at 9 p.m. Wednesday. The park bench on the corner of 3rd and Washington. Show me why I'm wrong, and I should be afraid. The bench was only like a block from my apartment, so every Wednesday, I would walk down there and see if anyone or anything came by. I usually wouldn't sit there. I'd stand back and watch. I'm not stupid. I may not be afraid for black-eyed kids, but I know the internet can attract some nuts. And it did. Occasionally. Nothing exciting enough to write about, though. A couple of pervs and some teenage kids joking around. So this went on for six months, and then I stopped posting the ad. The week I stopped, I got a knock on my door. I was sitting on my couch, and it was a little after 9pm. I don't know how to explain it, but... The second I heard that knock, my skin went ice cold. I didn't need to get up. I knew who it was, and much to my surprise, I was terrified already. I was wrong about not being afraid of black-eyed kids. The fear is on a different level, an instinctual primal level, but still I managed to get up and open the door. There was a kid, about nine years old, olive skin, Dark hair, solid black eyes, just staring up at me. Can I come in? He said. I was speechless. After what seemed like an eternity, I responded with a no, and I began closing the door. We missed you at the park tonight, the boy said. I stopped closing the door. I looked at him, my mind racing. They have been watching me. The boy smiled up at me. It took everything I had to make my arm move again, pushing the door closed and locking it. As soon as I shut the door, I gasped for air. I hadn't been breathing. I sat back against my wall facing the closed door. He was still there. I waited. Nothing. It took me at least an hour to move from that spot, staring at the door. I didn't sleep that night or the next night. Eventually I collapsed with exhaustion at my desk at work, only to be awakened minutes later by a nightmare memory of that boy. It's been six months. I can't explain the fear that washes over your body when you see the eyes on these kids, and the state of your mind, the way your body wants to listen to what they're telling you, what they're asking. I thought if I told you my story, it would help me get over what happened and warn others. I'm positive these kids are evil, and the people they meet who can't resist whatever power they wield, I don't think we will ever hear from these people. I now avoid that corner park bench with everything I have, and I don't tell anyone why. People think I'm crazy sometimes, walking three blocks out of the way just to make sure I don't go near it but you'd be the same way if you went through what I did. Black-eyed kids are nothing to mess with. 
Earlier this week, my little brother, age five, was in his room talking to someone. So I went to see who he was talking to. There was no one there when I looked, so I asked him who he was talking to. And he said, the little girl with the black eyes. I was instantly freaked out. Nothing happened for a while after that. Then we started hearing voices and footsteps. I would be sleeping with my blankets all wrapped up around me, and I would wake with them folded neatly at the bottom of my bed. I have a bearded dragon, and when they feel scared or threatened, they will open their mouth and make a hissing noise. At exactly 3.58 a.m., he will make the loudest hissing noise. I don't know if that's my lizard or something else. My sister got scared one night and crawled into bed with me. As she was getting into my bed, I woke up and couldn't fall back asleep, so I turned on my TV. I also turned on my light to find the remote. I left the light on along with the TV also. Right when we were both drifting off to sleep, my door slammed shut, which I always have a basket full of books in front of the door so that it doesn't close. My light shut off and my TV went all fuzzy and made that static noise. I ran and tried to open my door, which can only lock from the inside. It is a push lock, so all you have to do is turn the handle, and it unlocks. Anyway, I tried to open my door, but it was like someone was holding the door handle from the outside. My sister and I screamed as loud as we could. Then my mom came and opened the door. Just then, the light flipped back on, the TV was on, and the basket was set back up. We tried blessing the house and praying. The house we live in was built in 2014, so no one has died there. We don't know what to do. I live in Cullman, Alabama. On April 15th of 2014, I headed out to mow my lawn. In the front of the ditch of my road, I have tons of bushes and flowers neatly set up. To my surprise, someone had come by and stepped all over my roses. I was deeply upset. The next day, I saw two kids walking down my road. Keep in mind my road has seven houses, so we all know each other. These kids look to be around 12 or 13 years old. I had never seen these kids before. Maybe they were visiting someone was the only thing I could think of. I wanted to go outside and ask them if they messed with my roses, but I figured they're just kids and I'd let it slide this time. The kids stopped walking and just stood on the road right across from my house. That's a good 80 to 90 feet away. They just stood there. I was looking out the window and they were just standing right there. I went to my room to go get my shoes and when I came out, they were gone. Now this is where everything went to hell. It was 8 p.m. and starting to get dark out. My power went off and on a few times. I'm not sure if this had to do with what happened, but it did freak me out. It had finally come back on. At around 8.20, I heard knocking at my front door. Around here, people all tend to know each other, so we usually always open the door to see who it is. I turned on my porch light and looked through the little hole in my door, but it was just pitch black, even though the light was on. I didn't know why, but I was extremely terrified. I started to put my hand on the handle and I asked who's there. Some kid answered. Sorry to bother you, mister, but we're lost. We need to borrow your phone. I have a spare cell phone you can borrow for a few minutes, I told them. Let me go get it and I'll come outside with you. The kid just said, No, you let me in right now and he started banging on my door. I'm not talking about just hitting it, but it was like some grown man was hitting it. I said, Kid, you quit that right now. I have a shotgun, and if you try anything, I will shoot. The kid kept screaming, Let me in now. You're making a mistake. I grabbed the shotgun just in case and held it off to the side of my leg. I put my hand on the lock and unlocked the door. This is where I made my mistake. I opened the door expecting either both of those kids, or just one kid with a weapon or something, but these weren't little kids. Standing at my door were two people, and both looked 12 or 13. Their eyes were pitch black. 
I felt terrified again. I felt like putting my shotgun down and letting them in. I'm not sure why I felt that way. As I had the door open for those three or four seconds, the taller kids started to walk forward to come in. I kicked my door shut as hard as I could and I locked it. At this point I heard both of them crying and screaming in a strange, distorted, high-pitched way, followed by some banging on my door again. I went to check my back door just to make sure it was still locked. Thankfully my back door was locked and by the time I headed to my front door, they had just stopped. I loaded my shotgun and opened the door expecting these things, but they were gone. I heard some footsteps and my neighbor was coming by. He heard some weird screams and came by to check on me. I stood there probably looking like death with a shotgun in my hand. I let him in and told him the eerie event. He told me to call the cops, but I was positive they wouldn't believe me. So I didn't. He left and I spent the next two days without sleeping. I have no idea what those things were. I sometimes have nightmares about them. I'm not sure if anyone else has ever seen these things, but if you ever do, or you hear kids telling you to open the door, grab a weapon, and stay inside your house. I live in Kilmarnock in Scotland, and for the past three weeks, there's been a girl following me down the lane from the side of my house. It is always a flash of fear, I feel. Then I turn around, and she's standing behind me wearing black. She has black hair, black eyes, and a short black party dress that looks wet. Her facial expression is blank, but her eyes are a little narrowed. She never says anything or moves when I move, but when I turn my back and walk down the street a bit, she either reappears ahead of me or is behind me in a different part of the lane. As soon as I turn the corner onto the main street, she disappears. I don't know what she could want, or why she reaches out to me, but I know that each time is always the same. A flush of fear. She's there. Then I turn the corner, and she's gone. This has gone on every time I am in the lane, and each time I go out to my back garden wall. She has appeared to me as I was throwing things in the bin, standing at the lane beside my garage door. She never says anything, and when I go inside and look out the window, She's gone. I don't understand her motives, but I was wondering what I could do to find out. I don't want her to be in a constant loop like she seems to be, and I'm wondering if by appearing to me she is calling out for help. I've asked my mother about it as our house has some presences, but she is unaware of what the girl could want. The other presences in her house are relatives, and I've seen them too. But this is the only girl who I have no connection with that I've ever seen. I'd really like to know what you guys think. On March 17th of 2008, I had my one and only encounter with a black-eyed kid. Before my experience, I had never heard of anything having to do with black-eyed kids. I was 12. I was sitting outside a hairdresser's in an old Chevy pickup truck waiting for my mom to get her hair cut. About 15 minutes had passed and I saw some kid walking back and forth along the sidewalk in front of my parked car. At first I thought I recognized him as one of my friends from school, so I banged on the front windshield until he looked my way. It wasn't anyone I knew. At this point I wasn't scared at all. Not yet. The boy walked over to the side of my car and just stared, I think to let me get a good look at his eyes to freak me out. Let me tell you, if you have never seen a black-eyed kid, you have no idea what to imagine. Pupils black as the night sky. The boy whispers, you must let me in. And then I locked the car doors and ducked down into the space below the seats. Five minutes later, he was gone. When my mother got into the car, she told me a boy with black eyes had come into the hairdresser's and had insisted for my mother to give him the keys to the car. She refused. Thank God she did. My friend Julia has lived in the same house since we met. She doesn't know how old her house is, but her dad said that he used to ride his bike past the house 
when he was a little boy. I have spent the night at her house too many times to count, and many strange things have happened. There are at least five entities in her house. A little girl in a white dress with long brown hair. A very tall man dressed in black with a big axe. A man with a hat and cloak that walks around the hallways. A young man with black eyes and a guy wearing a long-sleeved white shirt with short hair and jeans that walks around her kitchen and dining room. I have seen all of these entities at least once, and some of them I have seen more than once. Most of them don't seem harmful, but there are two of them that scare me. The boy with the black eyes and the man with the axe. The boy with the black eyes comes when you are trying to sleep, and he talks. At first, he just mumbles, but then you can make out what he is saying, and he says very mean things. He swears a lot, and one time, when Julia was laying in bed, he started talking right by her ear and said he was going to beat her. The man with the axe seems to be chasing the little girl. She shows up and then disappears, and then shortly after, he will walk in the room and look around and walk out. I've had many experiences in the house where I was getting up to use the bathroom or get a drink, and I saw someone standing there watching me from the hallway or from the dining room. I have also heard them walking around the house. They talk sometimes and turn the television and radio on and off. It is strange to me. There are so many of them. Can anyone tell me a reason why there would be so much traffic in one house? As I said, most of them do not scare me. I'm just curious as to why they are all in that one house. Let me tell you a little about myself. I'm in my early 20s. I just moved into this apartment and I tend to live a very private life. I don't even have a Facebook account. I work during the day at a grocery store. So I'm walking up my flight of steps to get to my apartment and I hear these kids laughing. And then I heard whispering. It was kind of late, so I thought this was weird, but I ignored it and walked into my apartment. I live on the third floor. I was getting ready to open my balcony door. It was really muggy in my apartment. I walk over to the door and pull the blinds. And these two kids are staring back at me. I screamed and backed away, smashing my leg into the table. They were both in blue jeans. The taller one had on a green shirt with white stripes, and the smaller one had on a button-up light blue shirt. The taller one was touching the sliding door. Hey miss, can you let us in? The smaller one just kept looking around. I still just stared at them. I was finally able to say, How'd you get on my balcony? I walked to the door and noticed how excited the taller one got as he got closer to the entrance. Can you let us in? I wasn't thinking. I unlocked the door and when I looked up, their eyes, their eyes were black. The entire eye. I quick locked the door and told them I had to call the police because my door was jammed and I couldn't unlock the door. So as I was calling the police, the taller one pleaded with me the entire time to let them in. The police arrived about an hour later. They came in and walked to the balcony. When they opened my balcony door, nothing was there. They looked down and saw two children that were running in the parking lot away from the building. The police took a report and said they had to have had help getting up there and that they would question the neighbors. I'm freaking out. I don't want to stay here. But then again, I don't feel safe going outside right now. When I was around seven or eight, I saw a ghost in an underpass while in London with my mum. Since that day, I have come across something which makes me wonder the true nature of what I saw. I'm no longer sure that he was a ghost. It's possible he was something else. I'll explain. Firstly, for those who don't know, an underpass is a small tunnel that usually runs under a busy road, where there is no bridge or traffic lights allowing pedestrians to cross the road. They are all the same covered in graffiti, rubbish usually, a bit smelly, 
faulty lights are just dimly lit. In a lot of them, lights will be broken altogether here and there. I was used to these tunnels, as was everyone else. They were very common. Anyway, to what I saw that day. There were a good amount of people around, coming and going on their way. Nothing strange. Out of the blue, I got a panicky feeling. I was not prone to anxiety slash panic attacks, etc. that I couldn't ignore. Things just didn't feel right. We continued walking. I could see the people ahead coming towards us, but the light wasn't brilliant, so at first you couldn't make out things like facial features, etc. All I know is I felt in danger and was becoming more alert to who was around. Soon enough, I spotted them, and the bad feelings skyrocketed inside me. It was an elderly lady, and a young, let's say robust, boy. They came into a better lit area as they passed, and I got a clear look. The old lady had longish gray hair, a little matted, and a small kind of smile on her face, but a very determined look. She didn't look around or anything, just continued straight ahead. It was the boy companion that made my little head spin. As soon as he was in view, I saw that he had no eyes. Just black holes where his eyes should be. Needless to say, the bad feeling I'd had intensified drastically. But the worst thing that shook me right up, as soon as I'd noticed the fact that he was eyeless, he turned his head and looked straight at me. At this point, I got upset. Mom asked, what's wrong? And I explained. She turned and said she couldn't see anyone like I described and to hurry up. Now, he could have been an ordinary kid, had an accident of some kind, been blind, etc., and I am aware that contact lenses that are all black do exist and so on. However, I am the only one who reacted to his unusual appearance. No one around me seemed to notice the pair or bat an eyelid. I'm all for not staring at someone who looks a bit different out of politeness. But everyone has reactions, even subtle ones. People at least look slash notice, and there was honestly zero reaction from anyone. My mom should have at least seen them when she turned to look, but she didn't. I deliberately never looked back at that point as I still felt in danger and really freaked out. I know a lot of people will point out my age, the location, but I never really had any fear of those tunnels previously. As I say they are common, even the poor light wasn't an issue as they are never pitch black or anything, overactive imagination, etc. But I'm pretty certain. Hence, up until recently, it's always an experience I share whenever the subject of ghosts arises. However, as stated, I am now in some doubt as to whether this was a ghost encounter. I have since learned about the BEP phenomenon and read many encounters online. Some I'm sure have been faked. They seem to be average men and women at first. The eyes are all black, no whites at all and their behavior can set them apart. Some think they are aliens, others think demons. They have even been compared to vampires, as in a lot of stories, BEP or BEC will turn up at people's houses asking to be let in, and don't seem able to enter without permission. I have no clue what they are. In a lot of cases, they try to touch people, and always give off this aura of evil. Eyewitnesses often state having a terrible feeling come over them and sensing evil. In some cases, before they even spot the actual BEP, it's the feeling that kind of alerts them. And the person who sees them at the time is totally alone in witnessing them. Everyone around the eyewitness goes on with their business, never noticing the BEP's presence among them. Since learning of these BEP's and reading others' stories, I have to count the similarities to my own story as in the feeling of danger I got before even seeing the boy, the fact that no one around me noticed at all, and as for the eyes, eyes I always believed were not there, were they in fact simply black eyes? It would explain how he was able to look directly at me. I'm pretty sure that I simply confused no eyes for pitch black eyes, therefore I'm more inclined to say that the boy in the tunnel was not a ghost as I believed for many years, but one of these black-eyed people. Any comments and opinions are of course 
welcomed. Thanks in advance. This incident took place about 13 years ago. I had just moved to a new city with my wife. We were small town newlyweds from the Midwest. We moved across country to one of the biggest cities in the Southwest so I could attend graduate school. Being naive and new to city living, I habitually answered the door without a second thought. Never again after this. The first thing that should have tipped me off to the peculiarity of this situation was the fact that someone was knocking at 6 o'clock in the morning. The second thing that should have dawned on me is this kid had to reach over a rather tall patio gate to unlatch and open it. The knock at the door was startling. My wife and I were getting ready for work, a pretty normal routine. The moment I opened the door, I was overtaken with an inexplicable sense of fear. To this day, I can picture him. Teenager, average height, average build, knee-length black leather coat, short black hair and sunglasses. The sunglasses at 6 a.m. struck me as odd, and even more odd, he was eating an apple. He was very polite and asked if he could come in and warm up. I said no. I closed the door and slid the security chain into place. A moment later, another knock. I opened the now chain door and before I could speak, he asked again if he could come in and warm up. No, I reply, and I attempted to close the door. Before the door could shut, he put his hand out, stopping the door on its hinges. He looked directly into my eyes, still wearing his sunglasses, and said, Can I at least get some ketchup for my apple? No, I reply, albeit a little bit confused. Get the hell out of here. My wife is calling the police. He takes a moment to let this information sink in, lowers his glasses, revealing eyes as black as obsidian and says, No, you won't be calling anybody. At that moment, I force the door closed, lock it, and call out to my wife. She is scared beyond all belief and hiding in the bedroom. All jacked up on adrenaline, I rip the curtains back to look out the window next to the door. He's gone. Absolutely no trace of him. I go out on the patio and I check the gate. It's still latched from the inside. That was messed up, I had thought to myself. As I turned to enter the house again, I noticed a half-eaten apple laying there on the ground. I have to be honest. I am a bit embarrassed about sharing this story. It has been a few months since I've had this eerie encounter, and the image of that face is still emblazoned in mind. Now, Long before I had ever heard of black-eyed kids, due to much research online, finding many stories on them, I in fact had an encounter with one. I'll never forget it. It's still very vivid in my mind. I was sitting in my car at a shopping center parking lot, checking my bank account on my mobile. I happened to look at the car next to me and noticed a child between 12 and 13 looking back at me. I smiled and looked away. Then something registered in my mind that the kid didn't really look right. I looked back, and the creepy kid was still looking at me, staring, actually, with a sinister smile on his face. It felt like he was looking right through me. I stared back, trying to make the rude boy look away, and that's when I noticed that his eyes were completely black, with no sliver of white, similar to doll eyes. His face seemed frozen in that creepy stare. He never blinked. I began to have an overwhelming and an irrational fear of this kid. My heart was racing, and I was literally afraid for my life. I slowly reached up and locked the car door, completely aware that he was still staring at me, almost mocking me, enjoying my fear. I was so disturbed by him that I decided to move to another, further away parking spot in hopes that that boy was not watching and would think that I actually just left altogether. As I watched from a distance, I noticed two young females in their mid-twenties approach the car talking and laughing amongst themselves as they opened the doors and entered the car. 
Strangely, neither of them seemed to act as if anyone else was occupying this car. Not acknowledging this creepy child in the car I had seen only moments earlier. Then, all of a sudden, as they backed out and began to drive off, in the back seat in the rear window popped up this little head with that black-eyed child's face staring directly at me as if he knew I was still there and had been watching me. He watched me until they were completely out of that parking lot and could not see me anymore, and thankfully, I could not see him. Curious to know, I did some research online to see if there was some eye condition that caused the eye to be completely black and not due to dilation. I happened across a site that described exactly what I saw. I just hope that I do not see one again. That's all for today's video. I do hope you enjoyed. Until next time, everyone take care, be safe, and above all, stay scared.